Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Kardec Radio, where we are here to nourish our souls. I'm Nora Brazil, the host of this program, Soothing Pills of Trust, based off the book, Pills of Trust by Dr. Diaz de Cruz and the Dean Andre Moreira. Awesome teamwork. Goodness, what a great book uh, that we definitely uh, have in our resources, uh, uh, you know, with other resources because it was so helpful uh, during this uh, amazing year of 2020. Uh, amazing because so many wonderful things happen. And as we uh, break down today's lesson, we're going to leave with a different perspective. Uh, hoping always, friends, that we leave after we hear this study with a, a more peaceful, harmonious, soothing uh, heart, right? As we receive these soothing messages from the spirits, the mentors, the guides, and of course, of course, God. Let's say our prayer and then we get right into it. Dear Mother, Father, God, Creator, thank you so much for today. What a blessing to have arrived the last day of the year 20 and 20 we're so grateful for all the resources thank you so much above all for your love and thank you for all the resources that we have available to study so that we may continue to grow thank you for Kardec radio that's been here this entire year one more year helping each and every one of us advance thank you we ask the mentors of this show and Kardec Radio to please inspire us today with a beautiful message that we can take with us as a lovely lesson for the end of the year and beginning of a new year. And so be it. All right, friends. So um, my uh, <laughs> my laptop broke a couple of days ago, but that's okay. I will be using my phone. I love it because this is out of my comfort zone, right? It's so nice when we have the slides and everything's there. So it's like a nice, a lovely conversation. So, um, but we're still going to take deep breaths and take a pause so that we don't get too overwhelmed. I think so if we're, uh, with all this stuff. So I definitely a, a, a lovely, uh, different scenario. And so I welcome this lesson. Um, but if you have been following um, the whole, m most of the uh, the shows, I do have a slideshow. So pardon me, dear friends, that I wasn't able to, um, to provide some slides today, but it's a great exercise to add on top of everything to visualize the words in our hearts. So today's uh, chapter is entitled The Faith. That sustains. So it's so great to be talking about faith because really that's what 2020 was all about, right? A lot of us at the end of the year, we go back and we do our, you know, um, our little checklist of did I do this? Did I do this? Uh, uh, you could have done this better. What could I have done? You know, uh, we evaluate our, ourselves in a friendly, nurturing way, of course, right? It's a good thing. It's a, you know, uh, we want to um, see where we're at. Uh, I know that we've uh, mentioned here, Dr. Anceloni, Benjamin Franklin, right? Where he had this exercise as well, where he would go and he has his little list of things that he needed to work on. So it's a healthy exercise, uh, as long as we are being nurturing to ourselves. So as we're doing this in today's uh, 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 chapter, friends, I won't read the whole thing. I encourage you to to read the book um, I, because really there's so much and it's one of those things, right? It's so tiny. It's like a minimalist book, but my gosh, minimalist has a lot. If you've gone to like an art uh, gallery and you see that there's this canvas and it's like a dot, <laughs> I think I went to the, I believe it was the Rothko uh, Chapel in, in Houston, Texas, and uh, it's a lovely place inside, and so um, the, the pieces are just blank canvases, literally. You just sit there and meditate, right? It's so minimalist, and so sometimes when we have little books like these, 
you better watch out friends <laughs> so today's uh, lesson really it, it's the chapter really is sustains on its own and it's five paragraphs love the way the first paragraph begins time echoes rapidly so the first time I read this um, this chapter, I, I didn't even go any further. Just with the, the phrase, time echoes rapidly. What does it mean by time echoes, right? So we think about the word echo, and it could be like, imagine ourselves in a cave. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Cardiac radio, cardiac radio, right? And so we hear our own, um, our own echo back. And it's interesting, it says the time is like an echo. So we can look at it this in, in, in two ways. We can look at it in forms of the a little bit more the, the quantum physics side of it, right? Because time in essence is not linear. There's been several studies. I don't have particular resources today, friends, but I encourage you can go on Google and find some really great universities that are doing great work, some very awesome doctors and universities, right? The point is that we understand that in some level and dimension, time is like an echo because it comes from everywhere. I mean, it's so hard to really trace an echo. So, um, and so it's interesting, you know, the knowledge of time and what this represents. Now, I think about, you know, okay, so where in spiritism could we have an idea, right? We always want to, you know, the spirit is... Uh, books are always full of this information just have to dig in right and what does that have to do with faith so we look at andre louis right and andre louis is a great uh example he was uh such a he is such an awesome awesome author very futuristic you know he is just so knowledgeable and i love how he shares what is really really on literally waiting for us um, you know, or reminding us because we've at some point and in some level, we've already experienced life, quote unquote, you know, on the other side or when we are a true essence. So, you know, when he re uh, disincarnates, right, he goes through a period, you know, in Umbrau and finally, you know, he's uh, by God's mercy, he's taken to No Solar, right, or Astro City. And when he's there, Right, he's he he starts to learn, and he then he provides a, a the whole series of his excursions and, and and travels that he shares with us. In this whole paradigm of ideas, uh, we stop to think. Right, he never um, really mentioned time in a linear way. You know. He, he gave us an idea for us because here on earth it is linear but in his time frame as he was going through his experience it was a very different uh it was a different way for him to experience things because we also know that when he reaches to astro city right and he had like his live review it was like he got it from many lives it's the same thing as books like The Messengers, where he had proposes to us, right, many, many, he presents, excuse me, many, many case studies, right? And in those case studies, there's something so, so interesting. Each person in that, uh, it, 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 you know, that me was mentioned there, like they had also a live review, right? And it's like they felt everything from d different lives, but in like the present, in their present. And most interestingly, friends, the, the, when, especially those that still needed a little bit of work, right? They did, didn't fulfill their mission, right? We know that they felt a huge remorse. They felt guilty, um, incapable, and so forth. And, you know, it was like a very intensified uh, feeling that they got. So what does this tell us? That this time echo you know, illustration in that sense of on the other side in the spirit form, it intensifies because time is not like here with us that is linear. If now, right now, we think about we're going to do our year uh, analysis, right? We are in a linear time. And so it's so easy. Sometimes we do take this for granted, myself included, right? You know, we can forget many things. Probably last year, we won't remember what we were doing, you know, earlier this year, maybe earlier this week, 
right? We only remember certain things in this linear time. But friends, let's not get caught up, right, in some of these uh, <laughs> these um, ideas because we sometimes when we are so, I didn't mean to say ideas, but like we get caught up with the materialistic part of life that we tend to forget, wait a minute, time is an echo. And if this is so overwhelming, friends, to make it more practical, we can look at this as a metaphor, right? An echo goes and comes back. So whatever we put out there, whatever we shout, see, we're in this cave, is going to come right back at us. That, that would be a very practical way. And in this paragraph, it also talks about the, the forces of nature that partake in the progress. So that's our hope. That is the faith part, right? Again, Reminder that this, uh, the title of, of this uh, uh, chapter is the faith that sustains, and so the the progress part, the 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 natural forces on our sides is a it's it's hope, it's bringing peace. So even though we know that we have to think outside the box with our time and understand that time is like an echo, it's for our own good it's for our progress so when we think of progress we always think of something really really positive really really good right friends so this is a very positive note um so now as we are expanding our knowledge right on on faith we can say that time has a lot to do with this it's a it's a it's a huge key factor friends so what are we doing with our time, right? Naturally understanding that time is like an echo. Um, well, that will make us each individually accountable, right? This is not a you should or you shouldn't. It really is how we um, um, how we make choices so that we get everything that's back like an echo in and think about this, friends. Imagine if we're back in the cave and then you say, Kardec Radio, right? We expect the echo to be in our voice. So if we hear the voice of someone else, that's like already a part of a scary movie, friends, right? That means we're not alone in that cave and that no longer is an echo. And it's the same thing, right? Using that analogy of how, you know, we are responsible for our own actions. We, it, it's, it's us, friends, right? Uh, chapter, uh, paragraphs two and three in this are kind of, they're intertwined, friends. Um, uh, uh, paragraph two, it reminds us about love, <clears throat> not coming from like an attachment. In paragraph three, it already tells us, and I'm actually going to read the phrase. It says, humankind creates ties with family and society, which enables them to grow, progress, and serve while you're following the sacred principles of life, right? So, my gosh, if we go back to 2020, how do these two paragraphs make sense? Well, we had to learn a lot about love, right? And we've learned so many lessons. And when you think about, I remember at one point, several friends on uh, social media posting that they had to postpone their wedding, right? Because it happened right in the middle of lockdown, but they made this lovely declaration of love. And then from there, we started seeing people started dating, people renewed their vows. Some people actually got married, right? We had a lot of family members who started to appreciate each other. They started to love themselves differently because of the, the circumstances that 2020 brought up on, on planet. But it was interesting to see friends that God was very, very creative. And it's almost like he said, you know what? Um, my children, I'm going to give them a little experience that they're going to find really, really interesting, which is now they're going to now they can connect universally, right? Because think about this friends. Most of us went immediately on zoom, right? Especially with the lockdown, we opened up accounts, lots of computers were turned on. And lots of connections that had never been connected before started to be created. And lots of bonds that had been broken. Because now all we had to do is press enter uh, and 
that's it, right? We can connect with people from all over. So we realize that love, right, which is so important to help us, right? The ties with family and society and all of this growth, it started to expand. Now it was like we were getting perhaps like a preview of what will come when we have access to everyone imagine friends the beauty of that so we got a little taste and i don't know about you friends but i absolutely love that from 2020 let's think what uh new friends did you make uh dear credit radio friends right for me personally if you like allow me to share i uh, met many spiritist friends we i've been in several spiritist um centers that perhaps would not be able to frequent uh, so much because of the distance right um, I've had to change my my, my my job setting right many of us at home create a little corner that was our, our space to work to communicate with co-workers as an educator friends I moved my bed out of the room so I can have a great space to create a classroom for them. Can you believe it, friends? You know, we all did, you know, we all had some sacrifices, you know, because we wanted to continue uh, partaking in this part of growth in society, as these chapters say. You know, um, there is a lot of um, birthdays, celebrations, gatherings, so many things happened on Zoom. But we also had some very great things. Um, our beloved Andy Stewart here from Cardiac Radio uh, was able to utilize all the technology. And she still, uh, along with the team, they were able to assist brothers and sisters with some little kind bags of, uh, you know, or bags, excuse me, of kindness, right? Um, and this was all done virtually right and ensuring the social distances when, when they were going to pass out those bags for SS, SSVA um, for those of us that went to the Sunday studies um, we did a lovely uh, gift exchange we exchanged the spiritist books with each other what a beautiful beautiful gift friends extending our our, our love to others right, to our universal family. These are just a couple of examples, right? Um, this program also started uh, here Cardiac Radio with the intention of bringing in some positive notes for us during a difficult year. So there's so many things. So now it's our time, friends, as you're sitting in red, uh, and thinking about your year. I am sure there were so many beautiful ways that you also connected with others friends and where does the faith come in right this faith comes in the fact that it was us racing up to the unknown right stepping out of our comfort zone maybe i was very uh, shy on camera and now it's like okay like it's it's nice i love to turn on my camera and, and talk to beloved friends right a lot of us had to do that open up accounts you know and and, and just be outside of our comfort zones when it came to loving and partaking in society during a time that uh, was slightly different. So beautiful way to express our faith. Uh, chapter four, uh, I keep saying chapter, uh, paragraph four of this chapter gave a beautiful analogy, right? It says, faith expresses itself like a lantern of hope revealing a new era and a new human being. I was like, oh my gosh, that's us 2020. That's what we, we need to do because we really experienced so much uh, doubt, right? This is normal. It was something that came, it was unexpected, something new. We had fear and doubt and just so many questions and People had a really difficult time. People had experienced anxiety, depression, all sorts of thoughts that were coping with it. So it was definitely uh, a year, friends, to um, to doubt. Now, you know, you say, well, what is the good in that? Well, let's think about this, friends. Uh, when we doubt, most of us replace our doubt, right, with something good hoping right but really most of us that are 
tuning into cardiac radio we are here because we want to better ourselves so we we do things by by praying so we got a thought we would pray we would meditate we will call our friends a family member we will watch an inspirational video listen to a song maybe someone experience nature some people love to clean if they have stuff in their mind uh, you know just different different ways of uh, gardening and so forth there's so many all those hobbies right imagine friends if we have 10 doubts in a day right and just to give an example of course there's no way we can count but imagine it was 10 doubts and those 10 doubts we replaced with a really interesting uh, activity and prayer the next day, let's say we have another 10 doubts, and then we add it with 10, we replace it, excuse me, with 10 of these more positive frequencies. Now we're up to 20, 20 positive acts of self-love, really, of charity. If we add that, right, for the week, multiply it in the month, times, right, how many months now? We can say that we have collected these beautiful baskets full of flowers of faith. Exactly. So how where our faith is in that, friends, being grateful, right? Because if we didn't have to doubt, we would never exercise this. So let's turn this around and think, wow, I think God really allowed me to doubt many times. And then it was me that made that conscious choice to replace it with a good thought. And then look at all this these flowers and then we can give these beautiful flowers of, of faith decorate them right and and imagine this friends on the other side when we are in our essence isn't that beautiful um and to think about now the lantern so going back to it right because maybe some of us struggle and that's okay we need to be nurturing to ourselves right um god is so loving uh, so we follow the steps. Jesus is a very compassionate master. So we are, are compassionate with ourselves following that. And so a lantern, friends, imagine we do a meditation when we are doubting. We can even be creative, right? Add a color to it, friends, right? Uh, uh, a rainbow light with like confetti colors and in uh, glitter it could be a golden light a silver a purple a blue a white light very minimalist light it could be any color that our heart um, is showing to us and we we imagine that lantern right we are putting it in parts of ourselves and that lantern will light up that faith friends we can't go wrong with that so either way we have this beautiful lantern that is lighting us up and we have these lovely baskets of or this lovely basket of flowers full of faith all because of doubt when we replace it and we turn it around isn't that magnificent and what a way to to do that friends we go back and as we collect all of our stuff from this year we we know that there, if we focus on the light and the goodness there's so many amazing things that we have overcome right so then the chapter uh, ends with the last paragraph just reminding us about how love and service is almost like they paint a canvas right to just put everything in perspective in a canvas of faith um, I don't know if you've ever been to like a a party where they're showing us how to paint maybe you paint or you're seeing like uh, YouTube uh, tutorials on painting and so forth friends and a lot of the times of uh, they're gonna tell us I'm not a painter but I've tried to and they say okay we're gonna start right and so when we start the canvas it's like it looks so weird literally like okay what are we making out of this and like you use a really uh, different color like a brown but then Eventually, friends, right, using our faith, we start color, uh, painting in, painting it in, giving it some shape, adding other, incorporating other things. And before we know it, this canvas now has a, a, a design, but it didn't start like that. It was little by little. We had to have a lot of faith in the process. So that's kind of like the way that uh, 
Dr. Diaz de Cruz ended with this, right? So beautiful things for us to, as we are ending our canvas uh, that we painted this year, let's look at it and just like, okay, wow. Wow. This is so beautiful. Beautiful because we're children of God and everything he created us, friends. And what we do is so loving and blessing. And if there are things on there, friends, right, that don't, match that synchronicity or that frequency excuse me it's okay it's okay right we are aware of it we move forward we light it with that lantern of faith we uh, give it a fragrance of those flowers and we love it unconditionally right and understanding all these things about time friends so the last thing is points to remember I will make this quick. Point number one, let's try not to get uh, in, in involved in this idea of, oh, it's the worst year ever. Oh, it's the worst, right? It's hard, but let's try not to, you know? Um, some people, if we catch ourselves, we might it might be an every year thing. And every year, oh, no, this is the worst one. No, this is the worst one, right? No, friends. Every year has its struggles and its victories. And uh, they're not related to, to each other. So let's embrace, right, those, uh, those differences. And uh, it, it's okay, right? It's an opportunity. The 2020 was a beautiful opportunity for us to really, really shine those lanterns, shine that light. Um, number two, just be grateful for it. If it wasn't that difficult, we wouldn't be growing, right? Think of it as a test. Have you ever taken a test, for instance, school was super simple? You're like, yes, you get 100, but it was so easy. And then we take this really hard test. Maybe it was like an 80 or a 90. It wasn't 100, but my gosh, you we take more pride in this exam that was a little harder than the other. And it's almost the same thing. We look at 2020, and we, we say, yeah, I was a little harder, but that's, so, uh, that's okay, right? And the last thing, friends, to remember is going back to the idea of time being an echo. Many people are saying, tomorrow it's a new day, everything's fine. They're expecting that 2021 is perfect and all of a sudden, you know, what happened last year is gone. We cannot remove that. Uh, 2020 is a part of us and that's okay. It's a beautiful part because it means that there's a lot of transformation that's coming. So let's be very careful, friends. Remember, because time is an echo. Whatever we have echoed in that cave, whatever we have put in that cave, that's what we're going to get. Time does not think in terms of years. It's endless and timeless. All right, dear friends. So with that said, this is the lesson, and it actually went longer because I didn't have the slides. You see, friends, but we'll just go ahead and go through with it. Uh, we're going to sing a, a song and that will end our lovely lesson of faith and just wishing everyone you know beloved excellent happy new year if you don't stay for the song but if you want to stay for the song thank you so much my dear friends we are going to um uh sing a song the prayer of saint francis it was actually one of the first uh songs that we played here it's a beautiful prayer and um you know friends even though time may be something we still have to understand we still have to manage and you know it's endless it's an echo the idea of having a new year is so it's so lovely it helps us ground ourselves it symbolizes beginnings right so what a great way to ask right to begin a year at asking could we please be instruments of peace right so Let's go ahead and sing the song.
So much seek to be consoled than to console. eternal life. Amen. All right, friends, a happy new year. Happy 2021. Many blessings. We have on myself, the program, the mentors, Cardiac Radio, and friends. And please stay tuned in to other shows because here at Cardiac Radio, we're always um, here to assist and to nourish our souls. God bless. Bye.